Friends, family and keepers of the faith, welcome to another Del Boy blog. And as always, we're going to date stamp this. It's year three, blog eight. Year three, God. Uh, legacy numbers, blog 112. And uh, it's dated the 14th of April, 2024. And uh, this week we start off, don't we, a little bit about me. Um, bit a bit of a weird week not bad at all um really um the weather's a little bit better we had some great weather yesterday and it started off very bright today um i got a lot done yesterday in the garden really for me with uh, my health issues at the moment um i bought some funnels because funnily enough it's amazing when you look round and you're looking for stuff and you can't find it. You go, ah, oh, I've had a funnel. I, I've had a funnel because I've had to put um, screen cleaner in my car. Can't find it. Love no money. Um, so bought some funnels. Um, my uncle, uh, my dad's brother, told me that the lawnmower, when he sharpened the blade, needed the oil changing. Um and about a week or so ago i bought some um engine oil um two stroke engine oil um in particular and then i thought to myself god i haven't got the um manual for the for the mower i don't know how you change the oil does it have a sump um that's what i thought i mean I've, there's obvious things that i know that you do like you, you cut off the fuel for a start <laughs> Um, but I looked on YouTube for a similar looking device because mine's uh, a petrol mower. I think it's a Hitachi. Yeah. Honda. Sorry. Honda. Yeah. Um, and you have to turn it on its side and pour the oil out where the oil goes in. So yesterday I got everything together. And found I didn't have a sorry, a couple of days ago, got everything together and realized I don't have a measuring jug. And I don't know quite how much you put in. Um again, looked at another YouTube and they said, Oh, three quarters of a liter. Great. Um so I bought a measuring jug. Thank God for Amazon and same day or next day delivery, because I'll tell you what, um, I'd have hate to have got to the weekend and not got it. Um so then I looked around for a pan to get the oil out. Uh, learnt that it's best to heat the oil up by turning the engine on, uh, by pulling the cord, um, keep it running for about two or so minutes, get the oil warm, uh, then shut off the fuel, then pull the oil out. So I've got a pan, turned it on its side, black crap came out, as expected, the oil needed changing. Um, got uh got got the oil into a measuring jug which is basically left you next to nothing oil in fact i think you could have poured the whole lot in it wouldn't have made much of a difference poured it in um pulled the little measuring stick out and made sure that it wasn't above a certain level because there's a little little uh marks on it and i got it to just over three quarters of those marks um and mowed the lawn um and I, as you know, I did that about two weeks ago. So I managed to put the mower at a lower setting. Uh, and it's looking all right. Yeah, mum was pleased. Um, but of course, that was about as much as I could do yesterday. I did feel some crampness in the chest. Not, 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 not as sharp as if I was going on a walk. Um... And of course, the head mower is heavy, and I was doing a lot of bending and lifting and back and forth to get the key to the shed and get the funnels and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and of course, um, when I finished, I put all of the stuff in the sink to wash, and I poured the black oil into a container, uh, put it in the shed for now. Um, I'll dispose of that properly. Um, so that was pretty much yesterday as well as blogging you know prepping for my blog um and you know what 
um, felt happy that I got a few jobs done. And this week it's been interesting, you know, we had a bit of a problem on, at work on Thursday where one of our tools that we wanted to use, we had all, everybody's, everybody's user account revoked. Uh, apparently there was a miscommunication with licensing. Uh, that took a whole day to actually resolve. So it was a day wasted. Um, but that meant really that um, I worked really Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and half day Friday because I did warn work that I'd work through my lunch hour because my ECG uh, was required on Friday. Um, so I finished at one, walked to the place where I needed to get the ECG done. Um, that was a bit of a mess. Um, sat down, waited, listened to some soundtracks on my phone. I think it was um, Planet of the Apes and Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, Jerry Goldsmith. Um, and um, she put all the wires, you know, you have to put all these little sticky things to your to your uh, ankles i think it was three or four to my chest one on each arm um relax oh yeah <laughs> all that stuff going on um and then she said um the doctor will see you in about 15 20 minutes i went oh, all right okay um and then she, i waited around for another 20 minutes well, it was more than that. She came back out and said, um, you need to fill in this form for the blood pressure readings. And I said, but I gave them you earlier. She went, oh, so you did. Forget that. I'm, I'm losing my head, she said. Uh, but I do have to come out and apologize because it says in your notes that your, your actual doctor that's referred you wants to talk to you about your ECG. So there's nothing for you to do now. Um... The duty doctor could go through it with you, but apparently that's in the notes. And I went, yeah, best best keep it in the family, I said. Um, and so I know nothing. No, absolutely nothing, really. I'm still in the same situation. All I know is all this week, I've had to do blood pressure checks. Um, and I hate doing them myself. Um, you do two in the morning, two in the afternoon, two in the evening. They then... Do you do that for four days? They then got um, six readings a day, four days worth of readings, twenty-four readings, and they do an average. So this is my blood pressure reading. I wanted to look. It's quite an expensive one. It's an Omron. Um, it's Bluetooth to your phone. It's got the uh, medical cuff, which is better than the um, crap that you get with the cheaper ones. Uh, very nice, very posh looking. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, I'll stop it. It's starting to fill up. Um, and uh, I bought that uh, a year ago, you know, uh, when I was off work for a year um, while I was doing all my medication changes. So the only thing that I'm waiting for now is I do a blood test in a week's time. Because you have to do it after two weeks of changing your meds. And I wait for the doctor. That's pretty much it. But it's this waiting. Um, and the interesting thing about doing your blood pressure is, is that um, he told me the times I needed to do it, which was 9, 1, and 6. That's 9 in the morning, 1 in the afternoon, 6. Um, in the evening. So I did mine about 2 in the afternoon, actually, because I go for my lunch at 1 and I go for a walk. And it's funny how I'd been working for, for an hour at work because I start work at eight. And every single time my blood pressure was incredibly high in the morning. Um, the next one was after a walk, slightly better. Last one, two hours after finishing work, much better again. Amazing that. Uh, amazing now me thinking about work and my grievance and things just piss me off to the point where I'm a bit stressed about it all. You know how it is, because the first thing you do is you read emails, don't you? So you open your machine up, you look at your emails and you go, oh, there's another person moaning about this, that, the other. Oh, I've got a, let, let, let's look at the 
uh, dashboards to find out what equipment needs to have stuff done on it today, you know, like serial numbers. And there's the discovery dashboard full of stuff that you've got to do today. And of course, um, my meeting, our daily meeting is at 9.30. So of course, then you have to talk to all your team and say what you've done and what you're going to be doing for the rest of the day. Yeah, I can see why my blood pressure would be up. Do you know what I mean? It's whether the doctor knows this, because when you hand in your blood pressure notes, you don't put any notes to say how you were feeling at the time. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, all of that sort of going on. Um, haven't listened to much in the news. Um, it's been all catch up this morning, really, in regards to what's been going on in the week. I know bits and bobs um you know because you're flipping through channels but my i still fall asleep do you know what i mean and i wake up and the news is all finished and the soaps are on and all of that sort of stuff and i spend a bit of time with my mum so you know so all in all nothing really exciting to talk about one thing that really cheered me up was uh a good friend and he's also got his own channel ian the hill ramblings um he invited me on to his channel again on wednesday to do a chat and it was a lovely chat again loved it i i feel at home a little bit there we talk it's not all about horror we talk comedies tv nostalgia albums it's more a a general thing you know, um, and from that point of view, I feel I've got an input. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so I felt quite at home the last couple of weeks doing doing that. Um, and he happened to mention that I was two away from 200 subs. And I said, yeah, but I'm not going to get excited, I said, because even if you got to 200, one person will leave and it will go to 199 if I announce it um but it got to 200 on friday um and it just happened to be coincide with another good friend of mine sammy um he got 200 subs and i thought to myself do you know what if i mention it now i don't want to take his thunder away he's a nice lad um i think that that's a brilliant and proud achievement he's done it so quickly i'm so pleased for him for me to turn around and go, oh, look, me too, Sammy, would be, well, I thought disingenuous, to be quite honest. Yes, it's my channel. I can do what I want. I can be proud and I can say 200. But at the end of the day, like Ian said, you probably really want to get it to 202. So that at least if somebody drops off, it's not going to go be below 200. And um, and I'm not despondent. It's taken me three years. I'm, I I. I didn't start off with the intent of it being a total computer channel, a computer movie channel, a, a complete soundtrack channel, a complete Marvel collection channel. It was a blog. And I'd throw in some things that I thought that my nephew and nieces would like to know, you know, uh, whether something's worth something in money, whether it's not. Because everything you see goes to them when I die. And I don't want them to think, oh, that's a piece of crap. And only only actually it's the most expensive thing in my collection. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, um, I've announced it today. So thank you so much to everybody. Um, thank you to Ian for noticing. I think he's one of the only friends who did. Um, and it's nice that, you know, people are actually looking and listening and giving me positive vibes, not negative ones, um, posing me interesting questions all the time. Brilliant. Can't say any more than that. Um, it's been an absolute blast. It's been a hard slog, 100 to 200. I will say that I got to 100 in the first year. It's taken me two years to get the next hundred uh and yet more output more output than ever um obviously 
project start, haven't continued with them, all of that sort of stuff. I'm feeling my way. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't have changed it for the world, really. Um, the amount of people that have said that Sunday is now their thing to look forward to, to listen to my little blog. I mean, I, I'm a very humble person. I'm not somebody that's, you know, um, very confident and, uh, you know, know that I'm the best when it comes to doing this, that, and the other. No, 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 no. And uh, I know I'm not quick-witted and fun like some people, you know. It's... I, I I think I've got funny things to say. Uh, um, probably a little bit sarcastic, dry wit, uh, rather than quick wit. Do you know what I mean? I'd love to have be able to do one of my idols, uh, Ronnie Barker, a wordsmith, you know, changing words around to make them funny. But I'm not. So, anyway, we're, I'm rambling, aren't I? Um, and that's probably what makes this blog go over two hours. <laughs> so I'm going to have a little drink, and then I'm going to read out the news, as we always do. So we start off with the news, and we always start off with the war. And as I said, I've just been playing catch-up this morning. I know very little about the news headlines this week or anything. So it's all in chicken scroll because I wrote it quick so that I could get the blog out. Um, and it says here, speculation this week on Russia winning the war in 2024 and what uh, what would um, this look like and mean to us? Yeah, so of course it looked, it sh I saw lots and lots of maps of um, what Ukraine's... Uh, landscape looks like all filled in in red with moscow owning it all and what that would mean to the borders uh of ukraine now occupied by russia um and yeah it wasn't a wasn't a pretty picture uh and then i carried on meanwhile germany will supply u.s made patriot air defense systems and air defense missiles in the next few days to weeks uh, they're losing the battle with munitions, basically. They're running low. Um, this really just makes it a stalemate. Um, why people keep backing Russia, I don't know. Uh, I wished Putin hadn't won his election. Uh, I think that would have made things a lot clearer and cleaner. Um, but then again... You know, I can wish him one hand and shit in the other, and I know which one will fill first, as an old Steve Martin joke. So that was the war. And then I've just put little snippets, um, stuff that I did listen to when I was awake with the news. Um, nothing uh, spectacular here. Uh, apparently, O.J. Simpson died. Um and most of the news was not that sympathetic. So, yes, I saw a newspaper article. Um, it showed his life, um, his career in TV and movies after he'd finished his sports career, um, the robberies and the O.J. Simpson's famous trial, uh, and his eventual death, which I believe was in prison through, and it was cancer. Um, that's what I know. Um, I hope I didn't get any of that wrong. Um, and yeah, I don't like to hear bad mouthing, you know, like unsympathetic and all of this sort of stuff. But hey, should we be sympathetic? He he was a person that built up and built up and worked hard to get what he wanted, and he threw it down the Kermit. What can you say? You know, down the toilet it went. So, um, robbing his own, buying his own instead of buying his own memorabilia back robbing it and uh of course the you know the the, the trial with the murder of his wife uh etc etc so yeah then we had the grand national yesterday the grand national is a famous race always full of controversy um and uh it went apparently without a hitch yesterday so the grand national 
32 of the 34 horses started, two pulled out, uh, no fatalities, and I am Maximus won the, the Grand National race. It was joint favourite, 7-1. to one. Anybody who put a bet on, 7-1. to one. I hope that you're having a nice Sunday meal out with the family um, to celebrate. Best thing I think you can do, really. Grand National is one of those things where I remember at work we used to do sweepstakes. Um, you know, where everybody put in a pound and you picked out a number and all of that sort of stuff. There were some killjoys that said you can't do that in an office because you need a gambling license. What a load of crap. Um, all that woke rubbish. Um, so I remember, so it was a nostalgic day remembering all of that sort of stuff, you know, remembering, um, to get the paper, to get the, 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 the pull out with all the horses and then all of the riders and their forms and all of this sort of stuff. My dad loved it, loved the Grand National, but his famous race that he always loved, uh, every year was Ascot. He went to Ascot ooh, four or five times that I know of. I've got pictures of him in his suit. Um, Royal Ascot is a prestigious, another prestigious meeting, racehorsing. Um, I've never felt bad about racehorsing. Um, I've lived on a farm. I lived near two racehorses um, in the past that were called Little Good Lass and Little Good Lady. Um, and they they raced. The horses love racing. Um, what I don't like is unsafe racing. Uh, jumps way too big. Too many horses on at the same time. All that crap. Horses love to run. They love it. Um, and they like, you know, certain horses like being around other horses. Um, like I say, it, it, gambling is gambling. I, I don't, I'm not a gambler. My dad loved his, you know, flutter on the horses. He never bet on things like who would win in a fight. Um, he did the pools and did the spot the ball as well on occasion but he just used to like well i don't know once every two weeks going into a betting shop um looking at the form putting on a, a random bet um and he did that after it you know, in his retirement um after he'd done his water bailiffing you know because he was a big 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 person on nature um he looked after the swans on in the reservoir um he knew everything about that reservoir how deep it was what fish were in there everything um i miss him madly my dad don't want to talk about him too much i'll i'll well up um but that's uh the end of the news <laughs> so then we'll move on to the shout outs and you know how much i love the shout outs thanks so much for commenting thanks so much for um wishing in and hoping that i'm okay um and we're gonna read them out so i'm just gonna read out quickly the names that i wrote down hopefully i don't miss any um they are this week denny ian H ian hill the ramblings we bob art jambon steve's gaming martroid robert's retro gaming colin jones aka ponder david retro games play badly uh zx Andy Likes Stuff channel, Marvel Fan 3634, and Seb's Place. A couple of new ones in there, and that's probably why I'm at 200. <laughs> probably a couple of there that um, either haven't spoken or have just subbed. And to all those that have just subbed, welcome. Thank you so much. You please me no end. Please don't go. <laughs> After all that, <laughs> you know, kidding aside, um, this is just something that I, I find fun to do. It's a video diary. Um, I'm pretty sure my nephew and nieces are going to get a crack out of it. Um, seeing their uncle make a fool of himself. Why not? Um, I don't know what their opinion is of me, um, but they've now 
remember my voice, remember what I look like and know what makes me tick a little bit and the pitfalls of some things that are going on at work. You know, I will reminisce a bit more about the good times at work, you know, before moving into the MOJ, some of the times I had with the bank, some of the times I had with uh, being an assessor facilitator, some of the, um, you know, service desk work, uh, being a system tester, all of that sort of stuff. Multitudes of little anecdotes that I'll, I'll bring in um, to weight up the good stuff against the crap that goes on you know i think it was my director that i i'd only been with the with my with the probation the national probation service about a year and they called us all into a meeting and he said there's going to be big changes and he was talking about the the split of the probation service from the government um and he said do you know what i stood up here he said this is what he said 10 years and I remember the conversations going uh, on saying uh, what they didn't like about work currently, right? And the one thing I noted was five years later, those same people say, were, saying, were saying it was so much better la um, in previous years and now we're heading down another change and it's going to be bloody awful. Yet those people were complaining about the previous five years uh and now they're saying that those years were better um it just goes on and on and on like that and he come to the conclusion that people don't like change don't like to try something different um i don't have a problem with change and things different what i do worry about is my own job um what it means to me in regards to my pay and my family what i'm working for and uh the direction people are going without listening to the staff. Uh, I do think that too many people at high level talk about things, make changes without thinking about the poor sod that it's going to affect. Um, that's where I think that there should be more joint committees where people from lower stems go into these directors meetings and give their opinion. Um, but hey, that's just me there. So we've read out the uh, shout outs and my salute to all of those. And we'll get on, therefore, with uh, the comments. And I think that deserves a swig. Oh, I do love orange. Oh, it's got that nice tingle. And uh, no particular order. Uh, I've brought them all up, I've expanded them all out. And the first one is Ian Hill. Logged one day ago. There you are. So, this is how he starts. Thank you for the blog. As always, it's a real treat to watch. I've been hoping you and your mum have had a much better week in life. There are responsibilities which we have to carry. and Sometimes they can consume our whole beings. It's therefore very important to try and find time to do things we enjoy doing. It helps in the process of recharging our minds and bodies. You're quite right. And I haven't talked about my mum. Um, not much has changed. She still sits at the window watching life go by. I hate going to work on Wednesday because when I come back there, she is in the window and I think to myself, that's all she's done. And she's always telling me that she'd love to have gone in the garden and pulled out some weeds, but she can't bend down uh, anymore to get them. Um, which it doesn't really put pressure on me, but it does mean that I want to make her happy. So I feel like I should go out there now and do those little jobs because she'll only be looking at them the next day and thinking, oh, I wish I could pull that out from the ground. It's annoying me. Um, so yeah, but she's in herself. She's okay. Um, pains in her leg. I don't know where the complaint is going to go with, with in regards to my mother because I put in a complaint at the same time as my own health issue complaint with the doctor's surgery. I haven't seen them try and contact her, write to her, or any of that sort of stuff. So I will bring it up 
next time I have a word with my doctor and say, Oi, you know, um, you know, I did put in a complaint about my mum. What's going on there then? You know, as much as you're helping me now. Um, so, yeah, I'll get that sort of like looked at. Um, but I always speak to my mum about what's going on in the blog and she always smiles when she goes, who's that then? Oh, well, say hello from me, won't you? That sort of thing. She doesn't understand. Um, but I always pass those things on. And thank you so much. And you're quite right. We need downtime for ourselves. And I've always said, yeah, mum will come first. Um, I have had time or tried to find time to play on a few games this week. I've actually put a couple of files across to my mister. Uh which reminds me, by the way, I, I bought something for my mister. Um, two of these, actually. It looks very small. Uh, they're what they call card reader extensions. Um, the card reader on my mister is a spring-loaded, but it's locked into the case, sort of. Um, pretty hard to get to. You have to lift the block up and turn it on its side and put the memory stick in at an angle and all of this sort of stuff. So these little um, extensions I think would be quite good. I mean, that's one that's wrapped up. Let's see if I can pull out the one that in there at the moment. Yeah, it came out quite easy. So here we are. Look, there's one fully open. So that goes, that end goes into the mister, into the card reader and clicks in. And the card reader is then out. And you can just push it in and out very easily without having to pull things all over the shop. So under a fiver, you know what I mean? Um, looked into it, you know, on whether it would slow the thing down, you know, you know, having an extender, would it, would, would the speed of the um, memory stick access diminish? No. Uh, chances of corruption, slight, um, depends on the fit. So this thing goes into the card reader. And as you know, with any of those memory sticks, they click. They go, like, clicking. Um, because this is a uh, universal, they could work themselves loose because there's a slight amount of play. They stick out. So, yeah, minor. Um, and I've uh, while I'm building the memory stick up... Um, I'm using that a lot, but then when I the memory stick is finished, um, it will just stay in the device, and I'll use what they call FTP file transfer um, to IP onto the onto the device and copy the odd thing across. It's really there, you know, just for convenience. So anyway, we I'm waffling again. Let's continue. Um, Ian continues. I was pleased you posted your film review. You did another excellent job. Yeah, that's... I did another capsule review. This time it was somewhere in time. Seems to be well received. Um, I didn't do it out of malice. There was a number of my friends mentioning that film. And it's one of my films that I've got a lot of nostalgia for and a lot of history with. Um, I wanted to tell my own story. It wasn't to take anything away from anybody. Really, um, I can't recommend that film enough. Um, go watch the blog. I think you'll find that there's a, a, a number of little anecdotes that I talk about in that film. So you continue. I was pleased you came again on my live stream. This was on Wednesday, which I'm intending to do every week with you. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure I'm around. <laughs> Not like I'm incredibly busy. Uh, I'm glad we did manage to get over the technical problem too. Yeah, StreamYard went down one hour before the stream. Go figure. Was that some sort of... Was that God telling us don't do it? Don't know. It came back at nine o'clock. It affected a lot of people. A few of my friends were going to do um, a stream that night as well. Um, and they all cancelled. We stuck it out and it came back up at nine. So, yeah. Uh, so you said managed to get over the technical problems too I was very happy to try and get your subscribers to get to 200 then onwards from, from that you have a great channel which will grow and I know you continue to enjoy doing it you are a people pleaser and your followers will respond to that 
it's a fine quality to have. I, I, I think he knows me probably more than a number of other close friends. I am a people pleaser. It has been a problem for me being a people pleaser because you can't please everyone. I'm also one of these people that don't like to upset other people. If I see that they're doing a, a stream that night, then I change my day when actually you should be arrogant enough to go, no, if I want to do it that night, I'll do it that night. Sodom. Um, I'm not sort of like that. You see what I mean? I, I want other people's channels to grow. I don't want my channel to be a, di a distraction, you know? Like I didn't want my 200 subs announcement to be a distraction to Sammy. It's that sort of thing. People pleasing is a problem that I'm addressing. But remember, I'm, I'm in my 50s. It's like asking you to write with your left hand when you're right-handed. Um, it's a behavioral thing. The hardest thing that anybody you can ask anybody to do is change a behavioral thing. Right? If you've done it for a number of number of things, try it yourself. If you're not ambidextrous, because I'm not, and if you are, great, my God, I wish I was. Um, try writing with your other hand and seeing how difficult it is. Then try every day to write with that hand. It will get better, but my God, how long will that take you to do? It's that sort of thing. Um, anyway. I've recorded my first proper album review this week. I enjoyed it and gained a lot from just doing it. I'm excited at the prospect of doing a lot more of these. Music, films and TV series are my passion. With a large dose of nostalgia too, aren't they just? That's where I think we mimic each other, Ian. Uh, we come of that age where uh, we bought soundtracks. We watched TV when TV was in its boom. Um... We went to the pictures. We continue to buy those films now. Um, we keep up with the technology only because we want to watch it in the best quality, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then the nostalgia of it all. That's, you know, some people say that it's, it's quite dangerous to have so much of your foot in the past, right? You should have a toe in the past, continue to move forward and look forward i must admit i do have too much of a nostalgia but i wouldn't say it's unhealthy but it could be um and all i can say about that is is that i'm keeping an eye on it because yeah you should continue to be excited about what the next new day is going to be like rather than just reminisce about what you were doing this day back in 1978 you know what i mean <laughs> or something um so yeah i'm looking into that uh my question this week is give me five james stewart films that you enjoy oh you get <laughs> james stewart jimmy stewart it's not like we're on first name terms and he's dead uh jimmy stewart well obviously the one that comes to mind is it's a wonderful life Frank Capra. Um, what a wonderful film. Um, so much you can learn from that. What, what if you were not around, how the world would be different? We all alter things in many ways. Just me standing on the lawn and bending a, gr a piece of grass over or uh, killing an ant has an effect on the world. And we must never lose track of that, that your worth is much higher than you think. But it's so difficult when so much negativity is around. Do you get me? So, yeah. Let's see. I'll always remember how the West was won, even though he's not in it that long. How the West was won was one of those great Westerns that was filmed in a totally new never repeated way in regards to cinematography they used three cameras instead of one panoramic camera and stitched them together so you had an ultra wide but it gave that fish lens type effect where it curves round 
So when you're when you're looking at the edges, it looks like they're coming in, then it flattens out and then go away. <laughs> if they're coming in front of the camera from left to right or right to left. But it looks gorgeous. The vistas, the countryside of the the westerns always amaze me when when you look at all the rocks, the colours of them, um, you know, the horses, the trails. They always filmed them in Monument Valley. I'm pretty sure of it. <laughs> a lot of them. Um, but this has got some wonderful settings. Jimmy Stewart's setting is um, when people were moving to new cities that they'd heard about that were prosperous and they needed to use the river to get from one area to another because trains weren't quite there yet and people didn't have money. So they'd build themselves their own rafts and go down the rapids. Yeah. And of course, there's all pirates down the side of the uh, the canal where, where you pick up supplies. They would rip you off. It's a great film. You have to watch it. Um, one of the earliest films I ever saw of his was Harvey. It's a famous film. Not that particularly great to watch. Harvey is an imaginary friend to Jimmy Stewart. He's a rabbit, a white rabbit. Um, everybody thinks he's mental. Um, but it, it, it it's one of those one of those things that Jimmy does an or James Stewart does an awful lot. Characters, right? And it's all about the character driving the plot. Um, so you know. It, it it it's it's an old it's 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 an old time um when i want when i think about james Stewart. i don't think there's many modern ones for me and he did do a lot of films in the 70s i think he did some airplane airport films <laughs> um most, but i i think he was um you know mid 70s and that he was starting to um uh, diminish his responsibilities of doing things for cinema um but he the, no but you can't mention james stewart without talking about his hitchcock days so there's rear window for a start what a film rear window is how on a piece of paper it sounds useless you know what i mean like a bloke with a broken leg looking out of his window and watching life go by which sounds like my mum without the broken leg but then witnesses a murder what can you do You've got a suspicion, but you've got no proof. Um, cracking Hitchcock film. And then, of course, the one that most people will say is Hitchcock's best, um, but it's controversial because people always also say Psycho and will say North by North, um, North by Northwest, uh, North by North, yeah. I always get it East or West, North by Northwest. Um, so there's Vertigo. And I have to say, I I hold Vertigo and Psycho pretty much neck and neck. And James Stewart is not in Psycho, um, but Vertigo, what a film! the The amount of firsts in that film. There's some animation in it for a dream sequence. Uh, there's a new camera technique of pulling the camera lens back while moving forward to give a uh, an expandability in the picture it's to make it look like you're looking down at a, a, a very from a very tall point and that you're scared that you're going to fall it's it's that give it gives that um fear of heights effect brilliant but i think that's five but that's not to take away two other films that I'm, i need to mention and that is um, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. Because that is a cracking film. Bloody long, cracking film, though. You've got to watch it. Um, hard for me to explain why you need to watch it. It's a black and white western. But, um, again, I think it's the characters. You, you feel for the characters. So, definitely, you felt for J uh, James Stewart's character. And then there's Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, which has got a very famous ending where um, he is at the White House 
uh, pleading his case. And he will not stand down, even though his voice is starting to go. He re refuses to move out of um, where he was until people listen to him. Um, and what a what a what a what a strong scene that is. Um, so yeah, some crackers there. Um, all of those I've got in physical media, not all in four K. Need to go back to James Stewart, to be quite honest. Yeah, need to do that. So I hope that gives you your answer. Thank you so much, Ian. That was brilliant. And you end with best wishes to you and have a re grand time, which I'm not getting any better at saying. <laughs> so gonna, that was a lot to talk about there. Let me just have a swig. Because I've just noticed Denny's the next one. Oh, my God. Have I chosen the longest ones at the top? Left two days ago. Okay. They seem to be in order at the moment. Um, my mate, Denny, we're, we're, we're missing each other at the moment. Um, he's got some things going on with his family. His work schedule has stopped us from doing a live stream. We were expected to do a live stream tomorrow. That's not happening um we're definitely going to get it done in the next two weeks um it's all planned out we know exactly what we're going to be talking about i think you're gonna love it um it's a matter of getting <laughs> getting our asses together Ooh, uh, don't want to missus don't want to <laughs> use an expression like that again getting ourselves together in one place at one time so let's read out what Denny's got to say. It'll be chapter and verse, as always. Hiya, mate. I hope you and your mother are feeling a little bit better this week. My father is still unwell, although better. He needs to regain his strength, and he's very low at periods throughout the day. I wouldn't wish this virus on anyone else. No, nor would I. Best wishes to him. Firstly, congrats on 200 subs. You deserve way more. Here's to the next 100 and beyond. Thank you so much. Like I said, some people noticed, some people didn't. Thank you so much, Denny, for, for noticing that. Be interested to see what the sleep clinic and the ECG results show for you. The sleep issue is a definite issue in regards to blood pressure. High blood pressure normally makes the patient tired sometime in the day, even, the medic even with medication. And congrats with your first interview series with Rock God. It's great to hear about the person behind the internet persona. Still have part two to watch. Been finishing off my Whizball video for the last two days. Normal service resumes now. Well, until my next text adventure video, LOL. Yes, thank you so much, matey. And thanks to everybody who's watched it. It's, it is amazing. So many people have watched the first part and the same numbers are not there for the second i can understand that it's um five hours 15 minutes in total and the last part being two and a half to two two and a half hours to two hours 45 minutes it's almost like I'm, i've got to get through the first one first so in many ways i'm glad i did it in two parts uh what i'm definitely glad for is i had such a nice interviewee um there in rock god made it so easy for me um came up with some sh um, answers that um not shocked me but were eerie in the fact that they mimicked my own in parts and then drifted apart totally as we moved into our 30s and 40s i wonder if that's going to be the same for every interview i do probably um but what a guy if you haven't watched the second part please do um i'd love your feedback i've already had one person contact me and said that they've got no problem doing that interview that person is probably going to be next no naming names i want it to be a secret um and i made it perfectly clear it would be exactly the same as it was for my friend rock god nige in the fact that the person that i'm interviewing would have the 
total say so on regards to whether they wanted to talk about any sensitive subjects. Never are we going to go down a route where it's too painful or would cause problems for other people that might be watching. Uh, may I make all of those things perfectly clear and that'll never happen in my interviews. No, they're supposed to be fun but insightful. Um, you continue. I must try and catch Ian's live stream. Annoyed me I missed the both of you through uh, uh, most times because I'm at, I'm at bloody work. Thanks for answering my question. Warlords of Atlantis needs a blue... Uh, blu-ray release yes it bloody well does uh loved your point on doctor who and the political state back in the 70s and 80s nothing was forced or felt like it was rammed down your throat definitely i'd like to return to a simpler times but let's be honest that time has passed yes it has i think um you continue blood on satan's claw anyone notice wendy padbury from doctor who i did yes um god she looked young though didn't she my god um because i've seen her at conventions or convention videos um and she still looked quite young then as well but um yeah i mean she's, she's all sort of like chubby cheeked and young oh, it just just makes you go where did the time go um true lies yes some folks need to get a life. As I said about aliens, one speck of dust and they're moaning about nothing. These films are the best they've looked since they were released. Dead on. Couldn't say it any, any better. Please listen to what Keith at Euphoria is saying, Nigel at Rock God is saying. Um, these films, they're... They're in the view of what the director wants. And they're as good as you're, as, as you're going to get. Think about this. Um, we watched them on VHS. And some people are complaining that they're nothing like what they used to be on their VHS. Well, duh. Um, the stock film that was used was of a lower grade at that particular time. VHS wasn't sharp. So you'd, you'd have uh, discrepancies there. As you kept watching it on VHS, it would degrade more. You were watching it on a CRT screen, not a sharp pixel orientated screen. The colours would be different depending on whether you bought the NTSC one, the PAL one, because of the way that the colour saturation works on a colour screen. And you can't remember what your eyes looked like or how sharp they were when you saw it at the cinema. And how do you know how old that projection pro projectioner was? You know, the actual projection machine. You go into an oldish project uh, movie studio, movie movie cinema, and it would have an oldish type projector. You went to a new one, and of course it might have had a much newer projector. The stock, therefore, would look different. Um, so yeah how many different things am I putting there and you're complaining it's not how you remembered duh is what I've got to say to that so you know can't say I can't say really anymore uh, my friends say it much better than me so another recommendation for a television series from me Fallout on Amazon Prime is absolutely brilliant. Slightly tongue-in-cheek, but graphically violent as well. You'll see many references to the um, IP, especially Fallout 4, so it's based on the game Fallout. Um, they have spent a shed, shed load of this production. Every penny shows on the screen. Uh, Walton Goggins steals every scene where he's on. Kyle McCoughlin stars too. Anyone who's a fan of the game, do not miss this. Visually stunning, script and pace get a massive thumbs up from me. Brilliant. I love it when people tell me about stuff I need to watch. I'm so far behind. It's because I fall asleep. It's for no other reason. Um, I'm trying to catch up. I've got stuff from last year and 
I tell you what, they'll be out on physical media before I get to them. And it never used to be like that. Think about it like this. To have a passion for being for watching stuff on f films and TV and to have that taken away from you, how would that make you feel? Have the one passion, you know, one of the passions in your life, which was getting, um, going in depth into something, uh, a TV series, you know, like a 10 part thing. And then finding you can't get to the end of episode one because you're nopping, you're, you're, you're falling to sleep. Think about that. That's what's happening to me. And if I could just get to the end of episode one of stuff without falling asleep, I'd be so happy. Um, fingers crossed for me on that. Um, you continue, Denny. Question for this week. What's your wish list features you'd like retained and which features would you like to see added in Guild Wars 3? Oh, God, God. Finally, is there any content you'd like to see removed from the game? Thanks, my friend, and pass on my best to your mother. Best of health to both of you. Thank you, and I'll, I will pass that on. Good God, I haven't thought about Guild Wars in a while, and even though I, I keep mentioning it, um, a feature... I actually got one important one. In Guild Wars 2, they introduced your home area. It's hard for me to explain with, for people who've never played the game, but basically it was a huge, massive map. You came from a district, which is a great big city, and in this city you had one area that was your own, and it was your home area. The one thing you couldn't do in that one... You, so everybody could meet up in the town or the city or whatever it was, the, the encampment, but you could never enter each other's home area. So there was none of your friends joining you in your own zone. I'd want that. I'd love it so that um, I could visit Dennis and he could visit mine and I could help him with whatever he needs to do in his zone. Because what you used to do when you went to your own zone, you used to look at your own notice board for uh, bounty jobs that were going on. Or you'd um, check on your crops that you were growing and getting some ingredients. Um, or you'd go to the local shop there and pick up an order of things that you'd put an order on because they'd take a day. So each day you'd come back, you'd go in, and the stuff that you ordered before would be there. It's a bit like Amazon Prime, but in a game. Um, but as soon as you walked into that zone, they were stuck in the city waiting for you to come out. That's it. They never saw what you were doing in there, and you could spend hours in there. So, yeah, there's that. I'd like a sort of, like, um, random dungeons. They, I think they did a sort of a random dungeon in Guild Wars 1, but it it's not... It, it, they're, they're generated now in Guild Wars 2, so they're all the same for everybody who goes in them. I'd like a return of that. Yeah bit like Diablo, you know, um, make up, make, make up those procedural dungeons. Um, there's a couple of characters missing as well. They got rid of, um, the paladin and the monk, which I, I used to like being a paladin, you know, sort of like a holy knight, Thought they were quite good. Um, Guild Wars can be top heavy, I think, with, weird creatures you know wizards that are like little elves and uh creatures that are based on lions or grizzly bears it sounds childish now but it's not if you actually watch it it's very 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 uh adult orientated guild wars is um and i think they introduced something that was really good which is what they call mounts these are creatures that you can ride on the back of and you can get across the land quicker. Wouldn't it be nice if you could actually have vehicles that you could build or craft as a mount? So you, instead of flying on the back of a dragon, you could actually build yourself a, 
a vehicle and travel along the roads in that vehicle and then you'd have to stock it up with fuel um suffer with punctures and stuff imagine all of the inventory you'd need for that oh yeah that'd be good um other than that i can't think of anything but the shop definitely needs rejigging reworking i don't like pay to win guild wars does it quite well it's really mostly superficial things um you know like change the appearance of a gun but it doesn't change its stats but they have been in the past guilty of buying something that would take you an age to grind to get it and when i think about it it'd be things like um pickaxes spades uh and some certain magic wands and things you can get them in the game but if you had the money you could buy them there and then and therefore you wouldn't have to do the grind um yeah i don't like that pay to win they don't do like i said guild wars is not heavy on that so that's my answers to that denny thank you so much my salute to you sir and uh hopefully we'll get to chat this week so sorry about the last couple of weeks and i hope things improve for you so we move to wee bob art going back a couple of days now and he he says um and my salute to um denny um watched along earlier in the week dell and cheers as always for doing your blog um i may not get to it every week but i always know i have something that i will enjoy listening along to when time permits I did really like True Lies when it came out. Uh, a good a good bit of Arnie cheesy movie. Jamie Lee Curtis wasn't someone I remember being aware of growing up, and I think it may have been my age as I was born in 1979. I now get around to watching movies from back in the 80s that I missed. Trading Places, for instance, and I am now getting to know these actors. Are there any actors that you have discovered a bit later in life and then start noticing them in other movies that you didn't know they were a part of? Ooh, that's a bloody good question, you know. And uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, yeah, Halloween. Got to see Halloween. And she was given the name The Body. Because, um, I mean, she is gorgeous. Um, in a film called Perfect, where, oh my God, she... It, it's like watching that um, that um, aerobic video. Was it Call On Me or whatever it was called? She's in leotards all the time in it. My God. But that's pervy. We'll go past all of that. An actor or actress that comes to mind. Going to sound strange, this, but I always missed... William H. Macy. Now, it was funny. I was watching this film called The Cooler. And I was looking at this actor. And I said, I know him. Where have I seen him before? And I, I was so engrossed with this film. It's such a brilliant film, by the way, The Cooler. Um, that I went, oh, he's been in loads, but what? And then when you look, you find out he's been in Jurassic Park. and uh, Boogie Nights. And all sorts. And you just think to yourself, how the hell did I... Why is it that I have such a problem with putting a name to this face that I keep seeing in films? And yet, he's been around for donkey's years. You know, because you see Harrison Ford and you just go, oh, it's Harrison Ford, that. Oh, it's Arnie, that. Sh S S Stallone there, look. William H. Macy? Maybe some people I've mentioned that name now a couple of times and they're still going i can't picture what he looks like <laughs> i don't know but i always i always tend to find that william h macy I, I trip over an awful lot i can't believe how much he's been in and yet they're all of a sudden oh he's in this film as well oh my god um so yeah i'm gonna name william h macy as my answer to you we bob art and thank you so much oh and by the way i was going past a charity shop uh this week uh, and I picked up this for one pound fifty. It's called the Art of Comic Book Drawing. Look, one pound fifty it was. There you go. And uh, full of interesting bits. 
I was I, I certainly looked through it and then uh basically it had this interesting section about hands. There we go. The building blocks for hands. Brilliant. So yeah, gonna read that a little bit more and do some practicing. Um as you know I've got a laptop with a pen. My um mobile phone has got a pen. There we go, look. Just to pull it out. Ooh. Uh, there's the pen. So I can draw. Um so I've really got no excuses really for not um doing some drawing other than time and so forth. So my salute to you, we Baba, and we move to my friend Jamon. Yep. Yeah, seems like everybody did something within the last two or three days for me. But we'll drop saying all that now. We'll say who who said what and when. Um, Jambon, my friend Jambon, he's put, Hi Dell, thanks for another excellent uh, vlog. And great to hear things have been a bit more positive. Nearly spat out my tea when you were saying how you had your first American hot dog uh, baseball game and then followed it up with, with it was not nice. Comedy genius. <laughs> Did I really say that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can see where you were coming from. You, oh, Yeah. Hope you enjoy the blood on Satan's claw. That's another corker along with Witchfinder General. I have a technical question this week, if you don't mind, please. You once mentioned how you sometimes watch films on a VR headset. I can't quite get my head around what that's like are there any downsides to it one of the things that annoys me when i'm watching normal tv is all of the distracting clutter that's around the telly so i'm very tempted to buy a headset just for that but it's a bit expensive grateful for any thoughts you might have anyhow all the best sir and you take care got a couple of corkers here for you yes there are there is a there is this little bit of a downside. Some people ask, how do you move around in VR, right? Because you're sitting down or standing up, or you can walk around, then it can track with you. But mostly, do you incrementally walk or do you jump? And most of the games you jump, right? So you move your cursor on the screen to where you want to go, press the button, and you'll jump to that point, and then you move and jump to the next point. It's like a it's like a pitch shift. Um, but the, obviously there are games where you're you're like a, like in Doom, you're you're run, running around and it's very very smooth. But if you can imagine, you can't do that in a cinema, right? So when you're watching a film, you can actually enter a cinema, right? So you go through the cinema doors. And it puts you in a seat. Now, you can see all of the seats because it's VR. So you look around and you can see all the seats. And you can choose whatever seat you want. Looking around. See all the people sitting down as well. Because they could be watching. Because uh, if, it, if it's a public one. So you're looking around. And you use the cursor to jump to the seat that you want to sit at. Which means that you can sit dead slap bang in front of the picture or you can sit at an angle like from the left or to the right just as if you went into the pictures so the downside is you have to jump to those seats do you see what i mean there's no walking along and slowly incrementally and sitting your ass down in a in a, in a chair they're set positions right so even in your own home your house where you can invite people to watch TV with you. And that is a thing. It's called Big Picture, by the way, in VR. It's called Big Picture. Um, you've got your own room, big cinema screen at the end, an area where people can talk, and there's a big settee, a big, big fuck-off settee that goes round in a half circle. And again, set places for you to sit. So... I'm pretty sure that your mate would want to be slap bang like you are slap bang in there. So it's like a bit like home, you know, you're battling to get to the seat where you can, you're sitting in front for your famous favorite program. Otherwise you're sitting at an angle. Okay. Positives. V, uh, VR makes 3D 
viable again. Um, I've still got my 3D TV upstairs and I've still got all my 3D media upstairs. But with VR, you can watch them all again because you can download digital versions of all of the stuff that you bought. But this time you don't have to wear those polarized glasses. So the picture is brightened. So now you're watching 3D as it's supposed to be with the picture hugely brightened up without having that, it's dark and you're squinting. You know what I mean? Because you're wearing sunglasses in a pictures picture house, which has got all the lights off. Who does that? It's like Stevie Wonder in a cinema. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of positives. Now, expense. Yeah, VR can be expense. Um, the latest headset that I've got down here is, is in the £500 bracket. There you go, that one there. Um, but the older one, the Meta 2, you can now pick up for... Ooh, if you go on eBay, you can pick that up for probably be about 200 quid. Still expensive. But then why don't you go down the route of um, a VR for your phone? Now, you're not going to get the best picture. But you put your phone in one of those clip-on headsets. You download Big Picture. You watch a film. And then just imagine that with the resolution pumped up to the ninth degree. And if you like it, get yourself a Meta 2 second hand, start watching some films. Hope that helps you, matey. Uh, that's the best advice I can give, really. Um, Keith has done some great stuff down the rabbit hole in regards to VR. He's another person that you might want to just sub to, Jambon, if you don't already. Just listen to his ramblings on VR. Uh, very insightful. Um, always a pleasure to read his name out and get people to sub to him. Great channel, you know. Um, and now we move. Oh, and my salute to you, Jan Bonner. And look forward to um, a visit to Pinball. Steve's Gaming. Oh, here's an old mate of mine. Uh, and I have to do my salute. Uh, I think of a different tune next time. <laughs> now, I've got a bone to pick with him. He did mention to me that his comments were being removed and he was bringing back his old channel to write comments in. But he didn't tell me he started recording on his gaming channels. And as you know, I read out what I've been watching this week. And for the last two weeks, I've not mentioned his channel. Because I didn't know it was there. I thought he was just communicating to me through it. So all of my friends have been watching this stuff and I haven't been reading out his channel. What a git. He could have told me, oh, and by the way, I've started to put my game content out again under this channel. But no, he didn't, did he? So I didn't know anything until this week, which I'll talk about later on. Because I've watched some of his stuff now. So let's get cracker at that lacking with my friend Steve. And he's put, hi, Dell, good bloggers per. I hope you're well, mate. By the way, your interview with Rock God was so damn good. I really look forward to more of these interviews for sure. Well, last week we had the stop cop leaking water. So the hallway carpet was squelching. And this week I have toothache, which is a big, weird as eating is fine, but drinking and, bre and breathing hurts like shit. I'd like one week with no problems or health issues. Yeah, tell me about it, matey. I feel for you. Um, by the way, my tooth's still the same. I can't get a dentist. Uh, I hope your mum is better now. And did and and did you ask her what her all-time fave TV series was? I'm just nosy. Do you know what? I still haven't. I've got to do that. I'll have that answer for you. Um, for next week, or I'll write it in the comment below to give you an answer. It's bound sure to be a soap. Bound sure to be a soap. Pound to a penny, it's Emmerdale. Right? She's, but she's watched Crossroads and EastEnders and Coronation Street, blah, 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 blah. And then when, when, she, when um, she was 
in her thirties and that she was at work. She would come in and she'd watch things like The Gentle Touch, The Champions, Randall and Hopkirk, The Seas. So she did watch an awful lot of that stuff. So she might surprise me. Plus she watches all that crappy heartbeat and flipping Foils War. And I tell you, another a modern program she watches, that's, um, it's got this dog in it. Oh, called Rex. Oh, it's a crime thing with this dog called Rex does my nutting you know i keep telling her i said you know what if i had that dog i'd have a shotgun shoot its bloody brains out <laughs> she hates it when i say oh how, do, how could you be so cruel i'm only joking mum but bloody hell another bloody lassie thing you know I, I, I could do without all that you know what i mean but anyway that's the sort of conversations we have um Thanks for answering my question. You must get sick of the dumb things I ask. But I do always enjoy your answers. I don't get sick at all, matey. I'm glad they're there. And uh, they're not dumb either, anyway. Uh, by the way, you were right about Tetris on the Game Boy. I was, it was played by Serebrov Alexandra. I think that's how you pronounce his name. In 1993. Side note is Game Boy was said to have orbited Earth 3,000 times and was later auctioned for $1,220. I knew it because of NASA. I knew it because I'm a big spacey like you. Um, and of course, you put two and two together and you think to yourself, does he mean a computer up on the space station that they've actually installed a game? Or are you talking about a person that took something up on his flight for him to play? And I, I remembered then how much fuel costs. And I then guessed it's got to be Tetris, isn't it? It's got to be the Game Boy. Got to be. And it wouldn't surprise me if it weren't during um, the manned flights to the International Space Station after after the, 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 the shuttle explosion, uh, which Jean-Michel Jarre did a concert for, Rendezvous at Houston. I bet you any money it would have been when the NASA platform took off again. Um, early 90s, where it was all made safe again. Um, okay, I have a question for you. Did you ever have a problem buying a particular game? Something you wanted but couldn't find it anywhere. The main one for me was Star Glider 2 on the Amiga. I saw it and it blew me away, but for the rest of but for the for the life of me, I couldn't find a copy in any of the local shops. And eventually I got bored of trying and got a pirate copy. Take care, mate, and give your mum a hug for me. Oh god. I can remember games hard for me to get later on in life, but not early. You know what? I don't think I had a problem with early on in life. Um, I managed to get Pirates, you know, Sid Meier's Pirates. I managed to get the Forsyth Saga. I managed to get the Hobbit on disc format with the book. Yeah, all sorts. Right. I'm going to talk about very, very latest having a problem. And then I'm going to talk about a period of time. So there was in the newspapers a big story about this. Halo had just come out again. I don't know which one it was, Halo 3 or Halo 4. But um, it came in a helmet. You bought the helmet. The game clicked into the helmet. It had a clip for your gun as well, which was a memory stick. And it was a special edition. Could you get that special edition Sold out in Blockbuster. You, you went everywhere. Blockbusters, Amazon, uh, Game, Game Station, HMV, Argos. Everywhere. Sold out, sold out, sold out. It was almost like we're in the middle of the pandemic. Get that. And it was the same for another game as well called Skirum. Where I wanted the Dragon Statue Edition. And I was very, very lucky when game were just about to go under and they were selling all of their stock that that, get, that turned up and I managed to buy it. 
but it was pre-owned. And originally, I'm, if I remember rightly, that statue with the game was like £199. And when game was selling off everything, I got it for 40 40 pounds and i've still got the thing huge whopping great thing and i haven't opened it i still haven't played the game skirum a game that's been released more times than i've had beans on toast in the last six months and i haven't played it yet and i've i've bought it on steam i've got a vr edition Oh, amazing. I mean, I've got to get these things changed. But an era. Think about this yourself. I bought an, uh, an Amiga 1000. So the Commodore 64 was still the top selling micro. Followed, closely followed by the Sinclair Spectrum. PCW show had just gone past showing off the Amiga and it had only just by the skin of its teeth managed to get a demonstration of its operating system with the bouncing ball and the juggler ray tracing and all that sort of stuff. And I ordered it and got it same year. Very, very early edition in this country. In fact, it was probably a day one edition. Can you find anything for it? No. I live in a small town. And even if you went to a specialist store in London, you'd probably find it difficult to find games. I luckily found a gaming store in my hometown that used to each week bring out what was to be ordered this week to sell, you know, for their shelves. And the, I befriended the guy that was behind the till and he showed me what was being released. And there was an Amiga section and it had Defender of the Crown and Fairy Tale Adventure and Marble Madness and all of those, right? And he had the prices next to them, but they were the retail prices. So I knew that I'd be paying more for them. But every Tuesday I would go in, it'd let me look at those sheets. And on Friday, if I put, if I was good, he'd order it special for me and it would be in the store. So there was Defender of the Crown, Cinemaware, forty nine ninety nine. Right, it was a, it was listed in it in his book, I think, for thirty four ninety nine. But he told me, I don't know what the price that would make it, but I'm pretty sure that'd be fifty quid. Do you wanna, do you want me to order it? And I went, oh yeah. Uh, so he ordered that by Friday. I had that. I was then at home that weekend playing it, and then I used to go round to. Um, a computer club. I mentioned it before. Um, I sort of like was sort of in love with this girl. And we used to have a computer club. And we, you know, she had a brother. And I used to take my um, tape deck and uh, pirate copies of games round to their house. But on certain special occasions, I'd take my Amiga there. And I remember that Wednesday after I'd got the game on the Friday, taking Defender of the Crown round. And we took it out of the car, put it on the in the ta on the table in the in the in the um dining area, loaded it all up, switched it on, put it on, and you heard that cinemaware Defender of the Crown tune. And we were both Robin Hood mad. You know, we loved all the Sherwood Forest Knights medieval thing. And um uh, I remember showing her how to play the game and you know and her smiling playing all the way through it. I suppose it's what made me fall in love with her even more. Um because it was me showing my friend how to play a game. Uh and I could never keep the machine there. I had to take it away. Um but um, I looked forward then to the following week with an, another exciting game. Do you know what I mean? So that's a nice memory. Thank you so much. You made me think about that. So a, a period of time. Buying anything for the A1000 before the A500 came out and the Amiga took off like a rocket. 
that whole period of time was so difficult for me. I had to get I had to go to conventions and shows, and I relied on public domain discs to get me through those first eighteen months. Thank you so much, Steve. You bastard, in you dick. Um, and roll on next week, matey. Thank you so much. Let me get to Martroid. A good old Martroid. He's you know every week he's here, brilliant. He just just leaves a nice little comment for me. He's great. He says I couldn't resist Dell. You went back to the cinema. To, uh, sorry, couldn't resist Dell, and I went back to the cinema to see June Part Two again. This time on IMAX. So good, it really does spoil you for anything else, though. Quick question, then. Is everything better on IMAX over the standard screen setup? Question mark. Surely not. But I'm betting that the upcoming Fur Fur Furiosa would be. Damn right it will be. Um, and is everything better? Yeah, you, you answered your own question. It's not. Um, there have been certain stuff that's been converted to IMAX. Um, but you really do need to film on IMAX stock, not convert. So anything that's been converted, I would say, doesn't look great. It still looks better. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you think about it. 70 millimeter film stock. My God. Um... I mean, we're talking one cell and you could look at it and you could actually see the cell in your hands like that. That's how big it is. 70 millimeter. Seven centimeters. Wow. Um, and all the, and that's going through a lens. No wonder um, the several miles of film for every one. And the canisters uh, run out every 15 minutes. Something like that. Um... But yeah, I've seen Oppenheimer in I I IMAX. Um, 2001 is the best experience I've ever had of that film in IMAX. Wow. And that's a 35mm film. But that was done, oh, that was blown to, oh, ninth degree. Interstellar was probably one of the best experiences I've had in IMAX. But IMAX is a, is a far place to go. I've had to go to London. There are some IMAX cinemas that are not proper IMAX. There's only a couple in the country that are proper. Go see a subscribe to a guy called Mo, called the Movie Guy. He's an ex projectionist. Um, he will tell you, and then look up on his channel IMAX stuff, and he will explain to you exactly what IMAX is and how many cinemas there are actually true IMAX cinemas. Um, there are fakes, but well, not fakes, but they're cut downs. Um, so I hope that's answered your question. Thank you so much, Martroid. And we move to Robert's Retro Gaming. And he says, uh, back to the sports for a moment. Thanks for your discussion. By watching, I guess I was conflating both watching in person and on television. I used to watch my kids play sport a, a, a lot. That's not an option for me much these days. Although my youngest daughter, who is 19, will be... Uh, playing rugby this summer, so I hope to get uh, to some of the games. Yeah, oh, that's a, that's a brilliant thing to to entice uh, to sort of like let me know. I haven't got kids myself. I can imagine me watching my lad, you know, playing cricket like my like my dad taught me, or if I had a daughter, netball, or you know something along those lines, or um, hockey. You know, love all of that. Um, but I have those times where I spent with my dad. We went fishing together. I was never very good. I've got loads of anecdotes. I, I've mentioned one anecdote where I put a fish in orbit. You have to go back into my blogs. If anybody wants to hear that again, how I put a fish in orbit, by all means, ask. But... um. I have mentioned that story once before, so we'll move on. Thank you so much for sharing, Robert. And we move to Colin Jones, a.k.a. Ponder, after I've had another swig of orange. And he says, I finished watching part one on your interview with Rock God. Part two next. That's why I think the numbers are slightly behind on that. So much to, so much to watch. 
The dust in the light, a small proportion of that is meteor debris. See, I knew we were going to get an answer. Um, yes, quite true. But all I was taking was is that the air is not exactly like transparent. It's got dust particles. You answered my question before you got to it. We work to live. We do not live to work. And while I do enjoy what I do, I enjoy my time off more. Yeah, because I was I was sharing something that is very personal probably to me, and that is time that I should have spent with my dad, which I'll never get back because work needed me more. They didn't need me more. And all I've got is coulda, woulda, shoulda. Memories of that. And probably a bit of resentment thrown in. Uh... For the Saturday morning cinema, I used to love the CFF series and movies that we don't see anymore, uh, see anywhere anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were great. I liked part cinema. It was great. Uh, the trailer for True Lies doesn't suggest it's a comedy, but what a fun film it is. Such a piss take of Bond and all, all sorts of stuff in there. Uh, you were muted for the last five minutes, by the way. Yes, a big apology. I should have said it at the beginning. Um, a stupid mistake, just like anything. You move from source to source. Um, I turn my mic off so that you don't hear the echo in the microphone picking it up. Not that I think it would pick it up, but I always take away the possibility it might happen because I have got it set, my microphone, to just pick up my front speaker. And I've also got all sorts of cutoffs um, that should stop it from being picked up and you can turn the volume down to a level where i can hear it and the and the microphone won't but to stop all that difficulty i just turned the microphone off what happened was i forgot to turn it back on didn't i for the last five minutes not that i was going to be saying much but i put a disclaimer in the description saying stop at the trailers no point listening any further after that and hopefully people read it um but I'm pretty sure they got the gist that it was the end. Uh, five minutes, you know. I couldn't be bothered to cut it out or re-record it. Um, it was getting late anyway for me to do anything like that. So my question before... Uh, my question. Before video games were electromechanical games, what do you remember of those marvels of engineering? Before video games... They were elect they were electromechanical games, yeah. Steve did this best. One of his best videos that he did at the beginning was going to arcades in the seventies. And uh during the eighties these mechanical affairs were there. What are we talking about when we're talking about mechanical? We're talking about one armed bandits, tipping point platforms where you had coins with a tray that moved back and forth pushing your coins to a lip where they would fall over so you put two pence it dropped down it went flat there's a game show on it called tipping point um the coin then pushed the other coin to the edges some would fall off to the next tier those would then push into the next tier and at that tier the coins if you pushed hard enough you know with that with those coins would drop the two pound the two p pieces into the well for you to continue playing the game or just take home your winnings played those and i love the betting ones with the with the horses and the cars so they used to have this round circle of lights you know with which were red indigo green blue all of that sort of stuff which denoted the car on the track that was in this in the center and you put your penny in the color that you thought would win these cars were on pegs or horses right um so you put your penny in and then you see the race and you see the car stop and start and go fast and stop and crawl and that and you had to see whether car one two three four or five would win or horse one two three four five would win based on the color love those right rip off though 
you know, you'd have to sit there for ages working out the average of whether white won more than any other car, and that's all you had to do is then put the penny in the white one all the time, and you'd come away a winner. Um, but I had a funny feeling it was the clear one, the white one that won the most. Um, a very, very early video game was the one that was shown in Jaws, which was the shark game, which really wasn't a video game, but it was. It was mechanical. Um, you had the spear sh Jaws, and he used to thrash about it in the picture when you hit him with the gun. But it was more like Tin Can Alley that you used to buy for home. Um, just a, a sensor. Um, but I used to love those. And I used to like... Um, Throwing the dart at the at the playing card, uh, hook and duck, um, all of that sort of stuff. Um, they were all sort of like mechanical. I never liked the, the, the claw that picked up the toy up and then dropped it. I never I, I don't I think I won once and then that was a piece of shit. And I must have spent like thirty quid or something to get this egg which had a little plastic toy in it that you would do that wouldn't look out of place in a christmas cracker i never won the bloody watches and bloody big cuddly toys that were in there i know that much i was crap at them though so i hope that answers that i love the mechanical ones nothing will take away from me the joy of the video game that came after space invaders and going in there because i moved away then from telly bingo and all of those mechanical ones that i just been to play those games but i still have a fondness to those games and i'd still play on them because they were so cheap 2p 1p 5p they were never any more than that um and the bloody video games were 10 and 20 pence rising up to 50 and then a pound and robbing bastards um and yet you you could have you could have you could have you could have spent an hour with a pound's worth of two pences playing those mechanical games. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much, Colin. My uh best to you. Thank you so much for your question. And then we've got David Retro Games play badly. He says, keeping me company at work as usual. Picture is spot on today, mate. Yeah, because I had all this stutter and stuff. Hopefully everything's okay today. Uh First VHS I bought, fairly sure it was Lord of the Rings cartoon, which was sadly never finished. No, it wasn't. It ran out of money, finances. But um, at the time that came out, I saw a film called Flight of Dragons, which I liked more than The Hobbit, uh, more than Lord of the Rings. But don't get me wrong, I love both films, and I've got them both. Missed the live stream, sadly. If I get a chance, I'll drop back to them. Uh, no problem. Enjoyed True Lies. Can't beat a bit of Arnie. And cracking trailers. My pleasure, David. Thank you so much. And you've entertained us this week as well with all some of your videos and stuff. They've been absolutely brilliant. Um, especially like the Amiga pickups that you did. Please sub to David's Retro Games Play Badly. Brilliant game. Just to watch him get pissed with Kanzalaga while he's showing off his stuff. It's great. Not that he does that much anymore. Um, he, he's gotten sensible. Um, and... We, 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 you know, we let it go that he's um, sort of like um, clouded by the fact that there was no other machine other than the Spectrum. And anything with the word Commodore is a piece of dog shit at the bottom of his shoe. We, we go past all that. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm winding him up now. <laughs> Love him to bits. Uh, we've got a uh, ZX saying... Um, oh, he's noticed that my my stream was was silent at the end, and I apologised to him, and he said no. And this is what he put: it didn't spoil the blog at all, mate. Keeping up the good entertainment, and thanks for taking the time to make this content. It's not often finding genuine blokes like yourself making videos from the heart and not motivated by money. Keep it up, mate. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you so much, and I. I hope you get some great pleasure of listening to your name being read out, what you said. Um, I, I That's made me smile knowing that I'm doing something right. Thank you so much. And the last comment is from Andy Likes Stuff channel. 
Um, he said, your interview with Rock God 2004 was really good, mate. We'll look out for the next one. Thank you so much. And there will be another one. I'm pretty sure of it. Um, I love doing it. Um, but those are, the, by the way, those are the comments that are under my blog. There probably are comments underneath uh, my movie review of Somewhere in Time. For all of those people, I've read out your name at the beginning. I'm sorry I can't read out those comments. But we'll be here till seven at night. And then I'll be uploading it. You'll be watching this at about 11 at night. So I've got to stop somewhere. <laughs> so I'm going to just take a little break. And then I'm going to come back and we'll do the last two pages, which is watched on YouTube and your stuff on YouTube. Back in a moment. And we're back. And I've made a mistake and unpaw pa instead of pausing, I've hit the stop button, so I've got to do um, a joining later on, so it's going to slow things down. But, hey, that's that's the problem, unfortunately. When um, I had the wrong source selected um, when I was um, pressing the function key, so basically I hit the wrong button. Um, oh, well, one of those things. So, but we moved on to Watched on YouTube, and as you know, I there are two that I always watch. And um, they are This Week in Retro and Tech Moan. And there was some good stuff this week. Um, this Week in Retro had the standard free to uh, watch. They were games with character. I've uh, forgotten what this says. Oh, yeah, Apples to Oranges, <laughs> it was called. And we're all... We're all floppy, or what happened to 3M? Now, if I remember rightly, the Games With Character was naming the top 10 characters in games, um, which I didn't agree with the list. We're always going to have a disagreement on that, um, but it was interesting. Um, obviously, Lara Croft and Mario were there at the top. Uh, Apples to Oranges was actually the fact that uh, Apple are now saying that you can put retro apps on their shop uh, but they have to meet to a certain thing so in other words if you're doing an emulation device and you want to be able to put games to it you're actually taking responsibility for the app to be able to do that um, so that's a pretty wide spread comment to make because basically you could go to jail then because you've got the ability to put in illegal ROMs and it's your responsibility because you came up with the app. Oh, a bit tricky, that one. And then, of course, 3M. Wow, they were around everywhere, weren't they? Floppy disks, tapes. Um, you could buy seller tape um, through through 3M. Um, and, of course, when the floppy disk media sort of died, you don't free, see too much 3M stuff anymore. So that was quite interesting. But the, the most enjoyment I had was with Techmoan. Um, he came out with something that was called the the that's it the mini it wheel two it's a new record deck and this record deck has the stylus head underneath like a laser head so if you can imagine it's a big wheel uh, with touch around the outside um the record goes on top. It plays then anti-clockwise, not clockwise, um, because the head is facing up to go to the grooves. But it's got a sensor before it, so it scans the grooves, and it knows that you can then jump to the next track by lifting the head up, moving, and putting the head back down. Um, there were lots of little features like that that were in it, but the deal-breaker really was its price, which is in the which is you know very close to a thousand six hundred dollars. It was a Kickstarter, um, and the other one was the cartridge. You can only buy one of two cartridges. You can't change the the stylus head on the player other than between two, um, and therefore, to be quite honest, if you're spending that much money, you want the best head that's going. But all the heads that you had to buy, you had to buy through them. There were only two of them. And the most expensive one being a £45 stylus head. So, yeah. 
but he did a pop uh flutter test on it and it, its results were incredible uh the touch panel um jumping was 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 absolutely brilliant on it it could stand upright with no problems so you could have it flat against a wall on a stand um the other deal breaker really although not much of one for me was the fact that it had its own internal lamp so it only had a jack socket for its output and therefore you know you you couldn't really bump up the sound volume into other media other than through 3.5 millimeter jacks which is pretty poor um for that sort of money but love the player if i had the money i'd definitely get that it's such a um a technology leap for vinyl records brilliant then the other stuff i watched were just stuff that came up in my alert box the bfi uh, the British film industry do some interviews and they did one on Diane Morgan. I don't know if you've ever heard of Diane Morgan, but she's a comedian actress. Um, she came up with a character called Mandy a couple of years ago and she does these uh, sort of like 10 or 15 minute shorts for the BBC Two. Uh, but she's also she also came up with a character which I loved on Charlie Brooks's show called Philomena Kunk. Uh and just some of the things that Philomena came out with are just amazing. Um, so that was an interesting interview. Uh, then there was a user called User Lander, User Landia, sorry, User Landia. Um, he's an American uh, blogger who came over to Britain to go to the computer museums. And he actually visited Neil at the uh, Retro Cave. Um, and he dropped off a present for him, which was the very first flight simulator for a PC. And it ended up being in his museum. Um, he did this interesting video on if you're an American coming over, what trains to get, how much to expect when it comes to the wait times, um, what buses you might need to get. And then um, he did a walk around of the museum and of the retro cave um, and put down the prices really really good the things that they uh, our friends as tourists have to do to 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 see our stuff it's amazing really had to do so much um then of course i watch cold beer each week because he does uh the um he does a what's best to buy in the sales so he does the steam sales the gog the good old game sales fanatical humble bundle um and of course i'm always looking to see which aaa titles have been dropped to 90 percent. so it's quite good to watch him each week um worth a buy was good because um this 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 time because he he did a game called planet crafter um which is one of those open world crafting uh in space type uh, ones that it, it reached access now so it was out of early access it's up to a version 1.0 and um it was on a discount and both steve and i bought it pretty much the same day uh although steve's actually been doing some videos on it i got to play that last night spent three hours and on it and i'm fully engrossed fully fully in tune with what you're trying to do in that game now absolutely brilliant definitely worth a buy just like uh, worth a buy as is an actual channel in YouTube. Um, as you know, I mentioned Movie Collector earlier on. Movie Collector is one of those stay ports for me because he's an ex-projectionist and he tells you um, what the picture quality is like when you're watching a film. So I buy a lot of films. So generally there isn't a week go by where I don't actually um, watch his channel really. Um but, you know, there are, is the odd occasion where it, it's a quiet week. <laughs> so there's nothing there. But you get so much information from him. So that's brilliant. And then, of course, I don't watch Kim Justice as much as I used to. But Kim Justice finally got around to doing Mastertronic. But added the Arcadia range for the Amiga. Which was an arcade system with an Amiga computer board inside it. And did a deep review of Mastertronic and that particular aspect of their um sales model at that time because they also were the 
key holders for selling Sega Master System stuff in this country. So that was a very interesting uh, video. And that, that concludes sort of like what I watched on YouTube, apart from obviously my friends on the movie side. Um, this week I watched again a little less than I normally do. Um, but I did get round to watching these and I fully recommend it. Rock God 2004, which you know I did an interview on. What a guy. Uh, um, always brings out enjoyment and fun in his videos. That's the thing that I watch him for. And you, I, I get so much nostalgia and I get so much knowledge because he does an awful lot of horror films, um, which I know sort of less of. Uh, than I do in regards to drama, comedies, thrillers, and science fiction. Um, so he did um, he did four section free video nasty reviews, brilliant. Um, and then he did a album um, review of Feeder's new album, which he's bought on every color going. Uh, but he also had a few issues with getting those, with cancelled pre orders and all sorts. Definitely worth a watch. Rock God always is. Um, such a likeable guy. Definitely you want to watch that. Um, and I've mentioned Euphoria Pictures. Keith. Um, his is just so slick. He, buy, he's, he, he buys a little bit like me. Just about everything. But he buys stuff from other countries. And he advises you on where to get the stuff from. Which is very important to me. Because... Um, there's so many, so many outlets that you can buy in Britain, but you can't get some of the more mature special edition box sets like from Film Factory and uh, and so forth. So he'll advise you where to get that stuff from, whether it's worth it, whether the picture quality is the same, uh, what you get inside it, uh, the price plus the import duties, all that sort of stuff. Um, and so he really is the go-to guy um when when you when you want to know that sort of background information and then of course how can we forget ian hill the ramblings his output is just astronomical um he does the shorts he does videos does live streams just to name a couple and this is not all of his stuff this week he did five albums from 1985 uh a TV series called Early Edition Season 1, which I have I remember watching back in the day. I think there were five seasons, and I collected the first three DVDs of those and stopped for some reason. can't remember why. It was based around a guy that um, can predict what's going to happen in the news, and he works in the media industry. Really quite good. Um, he then did ten, ten five prog rock albums, Definitely worth a uh, listen, pun intended. Um, he did a review of uh, Doctor Who's The Sea Devils, which is a particular favourite of mine. I brought it up in one of the uh, live streams I did with Ian uh, about the sonic screwdriver and how it how you could see it really, really close up in this particular episode. Um, so that was great. And then, of course, I did a live stream with him on Wednesday, which was immense fun. Um, we talked absolutely about everything. I mean, there was not one thing we didn't touch upon in the, those couple of hours that we managed to get in. Um, another total fun time that I had this week was with my friend Ryan on Let's Get Kicking Pod. Um, with Rock God and myself, we watched In the Mouth of Madness, uh, a John Carpenter film, which I hadn't seen in a long time. Um, and it was nice to go back and look at that film. It's not the best John Carpenter film. It's at a time where he was transitioning from his previous glories to stuff that was more modern that you could see would just not didn't have the heart of his early stuff. Do you know what I mean? Um, so this was a couple of years after um, They Live. Um, in fact, it was the film he did after Memoirs of an Invisible Man. So you can tell the, the there's a there's a shift in tone of the film. Um, but we had great fun watching that and then talking about it. And then how can I miss giving out a shout out to my friend Sammy G, who reached 200 subs on the same day as I did. Isn't it nice that we both celebrated something as memorable as um, a number of people that watch our stuff? <laughs> did it far quicker than me. Uh, 
very energetic guy to watch. Um, so pleased for him. My congratulations to you, Sam. Um, here's to your next 100. Uh, I'll probably have gained possibly 10 by the time you get to 300. But there you go. Um, as Rock God said, it's not a competition. Um, but I have to say, I was never going to steal your thunder, matey. I wanted you to have the greatest of days. And I hope I gave you that. Um, then we move to your YouTube. So we're coming to the end. Um, and as I always mentioned, down the rabbit hole, what a guy, Keith in Canada. Um, he did a couple of videos this week. He did um, an air can, a sort of like an air purifier, dehumidifier for his bathroom, which is quite interesting because I don't tend to have those sort of problems living in England, but I can imagine in Canada with the hot and cold, um, plus in the bathroom, it must get quite steamy. Um, he, it's nice that he did a sort of an appliance review. You don't see too many of them these days. So that was great. Um, and then he, he gave uh, some sad news in the fact that he's going away for a little bit, only because he's got some work going on at his house. His content, therefore, is going to be less, but he's not going away. Um, he wanted everybody to know that just because you see a drop in the number doesn't mean you're going to see a drop in quality or that he's going away. And just as I was recording this, he did bring out one yesterday, which is a PS1 uh, game called Assault Rigs, which he reckons is very close to Tron. Um, I agree. Um, but there is another game that I think that you ought to consider that's a little bit like Tron. I'd have to change to media playback. There we go. And diminish my media player and bring up Steam. Because there is this game called Battlezone Gold Edition. Um, I'm going to turn the mic off. You might be able to see the video for it. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. Uh, this is a bit of an experiment, so let's see. But I would say that this is close to Tron Tanks. So here we go. Mankind teeters on the brink, pushed to the edge of extinction by the corporation's unquenchable thirst for war. Humanity must retaliate with the most advanced weapon it has. You. Good luck, pilot. Obliterate the mechanized legions. Upgrade your tank. Incoming enemies. Swarm detected. Remember, you are not alone. Fire the EMP. Welcome to Battle Zone. And I had to remember to put the microphone and everything back. And I'm sorry the picture was so small. <coughs> I couldn't quite remember how to make it big. Um, but I would say that that was pretty close to Tron Tanks. It's got that neon look. Um, you could raise and elevate the the, the turret at the front. Um, competitive play. You could play in normal battle zone mode, which is the vector graphics. And it's VR as well if you want it. You can play it in 2D. But you can play it VR. Um, so I think that that, although not trying to top Assault Rigs and Keith's video, I would say that that was pretty darn close to a pretty good Tron game. Um, so definitely worth a watch down the rabbit hole, my salute to you, sir. And then we've got Robert's Retro Gaming. And as you know, I call him Gaming Royalty. 
uh, does everything on the Atari, just about. Um, other stuff on the 8-bits, some stuff on arcade stuff. And, of course, he's a big Minecraft player. He started off a new stream called Minecraft Hardcore. He's now uh, filmed episodes 2 to 4. He did number 1 last week. Um, good jumping on point. But the 8-bit plays that he played this week were Arcade Invaders, Shooting Gallery, 3D Pac-Man, Congo Bongo and The Spy's Demise, just to name a couple. I mean, his output is just out of this world and he's just so knowledgeable and fun to watch him play. Doesn't die as often as Steve as well. I mean, maybe that's a good thing. I don't know, but watching Steve die is definitely a highlight for me. Um, and then we move to 20th Century Gaming. Um, he did a live stream, but it's been taken off. I think the reason for it was he had to interrupt uh, a little bit early but he was showing off a new version of an old game called Cockatoni Wolf which has just been done on the Commodore 64 I was really really getting into it um, I managed to find a copy and download um, the music is as irritating as the first game but obviously better rendered um, but you can see the you know the the nostalgia and the aspect of modernising Cockatoni Wolf it was really quite fun to watch um, so just do a search for Modern Cockatoni Wilf if you can't find that video anymore. Um, it definitely was launched live this week and it's usually, usually an old broadcast would be there, but I couldn't find it when I was, uh, re-looking, um, and prepping my blog this week. Then you got Seb's place. Now Seb, as you know, has come on in leaps and bounds. His production values are great. He does lots of nostalgia videos, you know, pickups, all of that sort of stuff. But he he, he pondered the question um, about school games, um, specifically for the Spectrum, because of School Days, which was such a hit back in the early 80s. So he, I think he found six other school games and you can see why School Days is just cast as number one. But he did ponder the question, did you really want to play a school game after you just come in from being at school? Um, obviously we did, um, because um, that game was popular. Um, but yeah, that was interesting to watch and uh, very entertaining. Uh, then we've got Steve's Gaming, and this is where I have to have a quarrel with Steve. Steve, you get, you didn't tell me. So he brought his channel back. Um, he brought it back a couple of weeks ago. But I only knew about it because he wanted to cheer me up. Um, as you know, I'm going through some health issues. It's very difficult sometimes to be buoyant. And he wanted to do something for me, which which is why I'm here. I, I do everything I can for you guys, specifically certain people as well, like Denny and Steve and, and so forth, you know, and Rock God. Um, you know, they do so much for me, so I want to do so much for them. Um, and it's just, you know, great that I'm able to put my output out there. Um, but he's done what must be, I've got 14 videos to get caught up with, mate. Thanks very much for letting me know, you bastard. Uh, and, uh, so I've got a lot to do after I'm editing this video together. Now I've cocked it up as well. So I've got to, I've got to join 20 or 30 minutes worth of video to the end of what I just recorded. So that's going to slow me down a bit. Um, then we've got Colin Jones, who did a high score channel uh, a challenge for R Type Delta on the PS1, and he did a main Meister one for Alien Syndrome. Always great to watch a master like Ponder um, play arcade games and see what his high score is. That's what we used to do back in the day, wasn't it? We used to hang around with our mates, stand behind them, watch them play, and then see if we could beat their high scores. Well, here's your opportunity. Join in one of these competitions, or just see if you can beat what um, um, Colin has done in these videos this week. And then we've got my mate, Main Meister. I always put him last, but he's always the one uh, that got me into this in the first place. And I will plug him to death. Uh, a great mate of mine. Um, couldn't wish for a nicer bloke. Um, and he did his Sunday live stream on Monday because he had some technical issues with his PC. Um, I wasn't involved in the early stages of that particular problem if he had i might have advised him a bit quicker or earlier but he did manage to get those things sorted and did his stream on monday rather than sunday which was nice 
Um, and then, of course, he did his Friday waffle. And I just want to put a reminder out to people that do watch Mainmeister. Please, please, please. He's done a live waffle. Do get some questions to him this week. Um, his channel and his Friday waffle survive by, based on questions um, and topics. Um, it, it, he doesn't do a blog like me because he doesn't do a diary. He does it specifically about retro games and gaming. So he does need that little bit of an assistance of asking him a question about those eras or about what you're thinking about of gaming right now, etc., etc. And that ends the blog. Um, I've got to do the trailers. So again, let's hope I don't cock up with the sound bit. Um, and um, I've got to join this together at the end. So I do apologize. You're going to get this a little bit later. So we'll drop to media playback where you can see I've now got myself sorted back up. I'm going to turn this audio off and hopefully remember to put it back on. And you're going to watch some trailers of stuff I've seen this week. And then I'll show you what I bought, which isn't an awful lot. So here we go. We've paid for that bridge and we're going to collect. We're going to fly 35,000 men 300 miles and drop them behind enemy lines. It'll be the largest airborne operation ever mounted. Quite frankly, this kind of thing's never been attempted before. We shall seize the bridges, it's all a question of bridges, with thunderclap surprise. And hold them until they can be secured. And we go next Sunday. Seven days? The sooner we go, the better. We've got them on the run. Joseph E. Levine presents A Bridge Too Far. Based on Cornelius Ryan's international bestseller. The story of the most dramatic and devastating battle of World War II. The plan is called Operation Market Garden. Market is the airborne element and garden the ground forces. I like to think of this as one of those American Western films. Germans will naturally, they're the bad guys. We, my friends, are the cavalry on the way to the rescue. A Bridge Too Far. Starring Dirk Bogart, James Kahn, Michael Caine, Sean Connery, Edward Fox, Elliot Gould, Gene Hackman, Anthony Hopkins, Hardy Kruger, Lawrence Olivier, Ryan O'Neill, Robert Redford, Maximilian Schell, Lee Ullman. Take cover! Don't you think that since we know that Arnhem is so crucial to their safety, they might know that too? The river's wide and that the current is strong. Hail Mary, the love grace. And as any more cheery information comes my way, I'll just be too happy to pass it along. In the meantime, just think of this as on-the-job training. They're 36 hours behind schedule. There's a battle, and we are in the process of winning it. Winning and losing is not our concern. Living or dying is. Well, if you don't look at him right now, he's going to die. Dead now. Right now. I can give him a quick examination tonight. Thank you very much, sir. We need reinforcements and above all, ammunition. Tell the general we're coming. We're coming tonight. Two days, they said. We've been here nine. Why don't we just try to bash through? Well, as you'll know, I've always thought that we tried to go a bridge too far.
the riots began because the stores could not meet the demand of Sutter Kane's novel, In the Mouth of Madness. Kane disappeared two months ago without a trace. He's the guy that writes horror books. You can forget about Stephen King. Kane outsells them all. I need to know if he's alive or dead, and I need that book. It's a setup. It's a setup. I just have to work out how it's set up. Kane's writing has been known to have an effect on his readers. See this? It's a map. This whole thing has been staged. You just get out. This is not reality. It's all happening for real, Trent. Richard Collier is about to begin an incredible journey into another realm, another lifetime, in search of the love he could never find in this one. That's Elise McKenna. Starred in a play in the hotel theater. When was this play done? 1912. Dr. Finney, is time travel possible? That is a question. Arthur? Arthur? You're the only one who can help me. beyond fantasy, beyond time itself. Universal Pictures is proud to present Christopher Reeve, Jane Seymour, Christopher Plummer, Somewhere in Time. Someday, in the past, he will find her. And the drinks are on the house. A little more blood, sir? Hey, we must have drunk three village girls already. David Niven is Dracula with flair and savoir faire. Thank you, Count. Teresa Gray's TV's Christy Love is Vampira, his number one admirer. Jive turkey. Jive turkey? Oh, they are magnificent. Did you ever see prettier veins? Yes, indeed, sir. And on page 53, there's an outstanding jugular. Oh, goody. Oh, oh. It'll be over in a moment. Neat, sir. Thank you, drugs. You know, that look of horror when they realize it's really me. <laughs> so exciting. We got trouble. Right here in River City. Get up. Get up. Party pooper. Back in Transylvania. They found a drink that's new. If someone wants to drink your health, they drink it out of you. They don't have the movies or corny stuff like that. 
When you wanna have a ball, you change into a bat. Hey, big stuff, give me some more. If you love young Frankenstein, you'll adore old Dracula. Bye. And there you are, and uh, all the recording seems to have actually uh, bouncing up and down, so it looks like I've turned my mic on. Um, those are all I've watched this week. Um, Old Dracula is just a, a, a comedy horror film. It's called Vampira in this country. Um, it was on Legends TV late at night, and you can get it on Blu-ray. Um, it's just a fun film to watch if you ever get round to watching it and a bridge too far what a film i mean the caliber of that film richard attenborough directing and did you see the cast of in that film gene hackman sean connery ryan o'neill um anthony hopkins you know i mean if, if, just to name a couple i mean just 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 astronomical and it's such a good film and no cgi no cgi everything there is pure um definitely worthy of your attention um and like i say somewhere in time i did a capsule review on so there really isn't anything to show you that book came this week other than this book you know i get these omnibuses every now and again this one came through unfortunately with no discount because i ordered it at that time just before I was hacked. So in other words, it's taken 12 months to come out. It is Spider-Man 2099. Uh, and it's volume two. So it goes with my first volume. And as you can see, it's a pretty hefty volume. Covers all of these issues. Um, and $125. Now, normally I get a 50% discount. But I, uh, I didn't. I had to reorder it. <clears throat> So my pre-price guarantee was at full price. Um, I actually got this for £85, where normally I'd be paying something like 60 odd. So I lost out there. And that's the end of the blog. Um, I hope the join goes well in a bit. I haven't done that in a long time. Um, I'm going to have to power on my laptop and bring up... Um, some programs to get the frame rates synced and joined together. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this blog. Um, hopefully I might be doing some more stuff this week. Um, looking forward to that if I do. And I'm just going to give you your time back and hope that you got some entertainment out of this. And with that, I'll end with my salute. And hopefully see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>